Barry, what got you started on making a film about Lou Wasserman? I, I met Lou in Toronto when he was uh, taking over Cineplex at that time, Garth Rubinsky's company, and, and at a cocktail party. I told him that I wanted to make a film about him, and his words to me were, it'll never happen whether I'm alive or dead. <laughs> Those were his words, and so I, I waited till he died. And, <laughs> and and what, what what did you know about Wasserman that that made you say that to him? Well, I I was one of those nutty nerdy kids who was reading Variety at the age of eight. So I mean, I followed him. I was amazed by him. I watched him uh, at the time in Canada on a small scale destroy Garth Rubinsky when Garth tried to take Cineplex back from him through the Bronfman. So I was amazed, and I was amazed at it, at the entire trajectory of his career. So, you know, I, I knew this was going to be a, a complex film to make, six decades of power, uh, and the Wasserman family were, came after me big time. I mean, I would have interviews scheduled with major power players, and, and, and they started to hear that I was making the film, and they'd make phone calls and say, no, 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 you're not going to participate in this film, and, and the doors would get slammed. I'd be in, in, in studios setting up, and they canceled that. I was followed, I was threatened legally six ways to Tuesday on that, but we persevered. Well, but for all that, you have incredible power players. You've got Jack Valenti, you've got President Jimmy Carter, you've got big uh, producers, so... We got lucky. We A lot of that, we got that in the can before the Wasserman, specifically Casey, really went after me. I mean, you know, Plachette was a, was a real, and Jack Valenti was a great gold mine for us. Uh-huh. And, did, and wait, wait, ha after they gave the interviews, did they have any second thoughts about them once... It was uh, Jack did. I mean, he started making demands about seeing how he'd answer questions and what and how he fit into that. But I mean, you know, there was at, at that point he was a bit of a light in the winter as well. And I mean, he had signed a release, and so there's nothing he could do. I mean, Plachette was the greatest because I, I I still to this day do not understand why she showed up. I mean, she knew the heat. I think she wanted to kick the tires for Edie and get a sense of what the questions were. Well, at. Casey. I mean, I I tried to make peace with him along the way. I took out ads and. Variety and Hollywood Reporter saying, literally, dear Casey, you'll love the movie. You know, I, I, <laughs> I was respectful. I'm going to be respectful of your grandfather. There was no response other than, I mean, I had a couple of great letters, frameable letters from him, honoring his grandfather and blah, blah, blah. He would not participate, would not get in my way, although he did. Uh, we never spoke. Years later, before E. Wasserman passed away, a friend of mine ran into her at the Peninsula Hotel and they got friendly, and, and they, she said, where are you from? And she said, and my friend said, Toronto. She said, you know, a lovely boy from Toronto made a film about my husband. And that was good enough. <laughs> the, the odd thing was, when we opened, Vanity Fair threw us a great party in, in L.A. at an opening um, um, screening. And, uh, and all of Hollywood was coming out for that film. But the publicist made a mistake and sent an invitation to Edie. And she said, what the hell is this? And so she started making phone calls, and suddenly the publicists would say, all right, you know, uh, uh, the Stewarts have canceled, then these people, and it, and it was like a tsunami of cancellations, and she went to work, so she had a little bit of a last laugh. <laughs> because he hated Ovitz, who, you know, said that he was the most powerful man in Hollywood, uh, do you think he had this, you know, he turned the buttons on Ron Meyer to run Universal for Bronfman? Oh, yeah, Obi. absolutely. I mean, I, I can't tell the story here, but I, I the, the, when the film opened uh, and it got a great review in the New York Times, I got a phone call from Ron Meyer saying, you know, will you come and screen this film for me? It'll just be the two of us, and then we'll go for dinner and talk about the film. And he had, Ron Meyer had the most unbelievably scandalous stories to talk, you know, about Ovitz. It was incredible. I mean, just venom. It was a great dinner. <laughs> and I have to tell you, oh, filming Ovitz was next to impossible. He canceled every day. Uh, I mean, six visits in, and but yet his ego was such that he had to be part of the film. You saw the suit. I had to meet with him, his art curator to talk about what about there's a Canadian uh, talk about the the what paintings would be behind Ovitz while we were filming him. I signed uh, this ridiculous release uh, on, on Ovitz's participation in the film. It was. Insane, uh, but he had to be in. He had to be in. Uh, Lou Wasserman dictated the headline to Variety to Bart actually uh, when uh, he screwed Ovitz, and the line was, um, "Mike Ovitz can't close his own deal." Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> they're good questions. Yeah, they are. Now there might not be any of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can come back to you if not. That's another question. Uh, uh, well, anyone else is thinking of a question? Let me. So you've made a film about Lou Wasserman, about Garth Grabinski, about Harvey Weinstein. Um, you know, how would you compare these different power brokers? I've done about 32 docs. I mean, they, they, I think my, my box set of moguls is now done. Um, but, they're, you know, they're all, they're, they're all Shakespearean. It's a bit of a cliche, but there, there is that point when you've achieved that great wealth, as you see in the film, where the money's no longer important, and that constant uh, uh, reach for power, it becomes almost this Icarus type of thing for these people. And it's amazing. All of these people I've filmed could have been more than happy with the wealth that they had, could have been great footnotes in history had they stopped, but there always has to be something pushing them further, and they're all the same. I mean, Harvey was the same as well. Now, uh, were there stories you got that you couldn't put into this film or couldn't just fit that, uh, uh, that are memorable to you? There were tons. I mean, you know, there, there, you know, there's always that classic thing. I mean, maybe the making of the Harvey Weinstein film, and that's another ending with, with reference to how that film was re-edited for its release in the U.S., but, but the, uh, um, in, there were, you know, the minute the camera would stop, everyone always has a great story. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Lou, Lou's connection to the mob, you know, although we flirted with it, the film was way deeper, way deeper. I mean, even David Brown, who was such a great guy and, and so great in the film, so classy, as was his partner, Dick Zanuck, had the best stories about the mobs and these people showing up and, you know, dinners and screenings, and Lou would put them on the list, but, you know, it was it was pre-social media and pre the same kind of investigative reporting that doesn't happen today. So, I mean, you know, Lou would have been taken down left, right, and center with people, you know, who he was hanging out with, but he was you know, completely mobbed up. was fascinating. And I think that's what the family was most worried about. They didn't want that. I mean, again, Lou made sure that he was almost antiseptically pure. The question is, you know, is there any mogul, maybe contemporary mogul, that the you'd be drawn back to, to making a mogul film? I don't think so. I mean, I think Lou, in a lot of ways, I mean, it was the last mogul. When I was making that film, people would say at the time, almost 10 years ago, well, what about Harvey Weinstein? Isn't he the last mogul? You know, at that point, I never thought I'd make a film about him either. But uh, it would be difficult. I mean, I think as, as David Brown brilliantly said, that you know the, the business has changed, and you don't have those kind of people. I mean, it's very difficult to to even mention moguls' names today. Uh, you know, they're huge corporations, and Lou Wasserman, not even as much as Harvey. I mean, Harvey's become a consumer brand where people know it's Harvey Weinstein, and he walks in, they report on him like, like he's a, a second coming. But uh, that, that, that world is, I think, finished. I can't think of anything. Anyway. I'm moving on to something else that's music-related, but it, it, it's uh, be difficult for me to add that box set. Yeah, right here. Who were, who were the people who uh, you coveted the most who slammed their doors when the Wassermans called? And was Spielberg one of them? Yeah, he was. And he was scheduled to be filmed as well. And, 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 uh, but Casey got to him, I mean, that day. Uh, uh, Tom Pollock, uh, Ivan Reitman, I mean, had, had told me great stories. Um, Lou and certainly Animal House and giving him a break on that film and, and whatnot. That there were there were lots of people like that. I mean, there were a dozen on that list. Clinton was scheduled to go and then and famously had his his heart procedure and couldn't do it. So I settled for Jimmy Carter. Uh, and, and there's I think there's this line in the film. I mean, I, I'd asked Carter, you know, uh, if he feared Wasserman. He said, Well, you know, when the phone rang, you know, and there could be at the time I'm going to get my politics wrong if it was. You know, Gorbachev or Wasserman calling, he would take the Wasserman call. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point while interviewing, you go through this protocol thing, President Carter, President Carter, President Carter, and he was telling me this interesting story and at one point. I said, But Jimmy, did you think that <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was all right. It's pretty easy going. Yeah. Uh, please do come back uh, next Tuesday for Roman Polanski Wanted and Desired. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks especially Thank Barry. You.